In this lesson and the next few lessons, we're going to be considering the topic of macroeconomics. So let's get started. The broadest measure of how the economy is doing is with gross domestic product, GDP. Very important to get the precise definition of GDP. And the idea is it's the market value of all the final goods and services newly produced in a country during some time period. The key ideas are underlined. What do you mean by market value? It's the total amount that people spend or produce in the economy measured by the market prices. Next important word is final goods that are produced, not intermediate goods. Any kind of production process, whether it's producing cars, has intermediate goods. You need steel or aluminum. Producing the tires in the cars, you need rubber. Those are the intermediate goods that are used to produce the final goods. It's newly produced. Newly produced means we don't count a used car that's purchased because that was produced earlier year. We only look at the new car that's produced because we're interested in what's produced in a particular period now. And finally, it's in a country. The domestic refers to in a country like the United States. And then, of course, this refers to a time period. It's the time period that measures what was actually produced during that period of time. Note there's a few things that are omitted from gross domestic product. It's unpaid work at home doesn't count. And then the underground economy is not counted either. Illicit drug trade or just informal work where the, the income is not uh, reported, say a painter of a house is get a, gets a, a payment, won't be reported, but that's not counted either. We hope that those things don't change in great magnitudes over time, by great amounts over time, so they don't really affect the general pattern of GDP. And I think that's generally true for an economy like the United States. Finally, let's emphasize that GDP doesn't measure everything. It doesn't measure how long people live, doesn't measure infant mortality, doesn't measure income distribution. It's the total amount that's produced in the economy, not attempting to measure everything. So now let's consider a particular case of how GDP is calculated and measured. And the example will be the United States economy in the second quarter of 2013. I've listed here what gross domestic product actually is. That's the total amount produced in the second quarter of 2013. So annual rates is a measure that pertains to a whole year. So more precisely, the 16.661 trillion represents what's produced in the second quarter, but at an annual rate. The way to think about it is, if the economy produced in all quarters of 2013, the first, the third, and the fourth, what it produced in the second quarter, then the total production during the year would be 16.661 trillion. So by multiplying by four, you get an annual rate. Having said that, now let's consider the other parts of this gross domestic product and how you can divide it up. One part is consumption. That's what people are spending on consumption goods, households are spending. And there's the amount that businesses spend, that's investment it's called. And then at the bottom, just switch to the bottom, government purchases, that's what government spends. And then note there's something that has to be subtracted here. It's sub what's subtracted is net exports. And if you look at the bottom, net, net exports is represented by the difference between exports and imports. So the, the 509 billion with a minus sign is exports minus imports. And exports are 2239, imports are 2748. So the difference is 509. So by taking in, adding in net exports, which happens to be negative in this case, you're making an important adjustment that reflects what GDP is. So I have to to subtract it out. The statisticians have to subtract it out. And so effectively, that's they subtract it out as part of imports. It's part of the imports number. And by adding in net exports, which is exports minus imports, you're subtracting that, that import. Similarly, there's some goods that are produced in the United States but are consumed elsewhere. The U.S. will export them. And so you want to count that in your production of GDP, even though no one, no firm, no government, no individual purchased it. And so that's got to be added, and that's why exports are added. Again, by adding in net export, we add in exports and subtract imports, and that's what's illustrated in the table. So that's basically how you get the GDP. If you add up all those numbers, you get the total. And indeed, there's some symbols that economists use. They use to represent these things. Y is a symbol for gross domestic product we will use in our models and, and considering the data. C is consumption. I is investment. We're going to say X is net export and just use G for government purchases. And since C plus I plus X plus G equals Y, we have an important equation. This important equation is um, used in our models. It's going to be used to examine the relationships. It's actually true. It's, it's, just, it's an accounting identity. It's one of, the, one of the equations in our models which will always hold. Again, y equals c plus i plus x plus g, where x is exports minus imports. And now you know why we can think of it that way. Having shown how we measure this, let's just go back and make sure we know why we did these various things. Uh, the key idea is that when we add up spending, what people spend the consumption, what households spend in consumption or businesses spend on investment, our aim is to get a measure of production. So I say keep your eye on the ball when you're thinking about this. We want to measure production in the economy in a particular period. 
We can think about four spending groups of buying things, households, firms, governments, and foreigners. Consumption is what households spend. Investment is what businesses spend. When the consumer goes and buys the pumpkin, then that consumer's house consumption will go up and the inventory will go down. And so it nets out just as you want so that the adding up these numbers becomes GDP. I mentioned why we add in net exports, and I'll just finally emphasize that the G in the C plus I plus G is only government purchases. It's the purchases of tanks uh, for the military, or it's the payment of school teachers to teach school. It doesn't include transfers, like Social Security transfers to retired people, or it doesn't include food stamps to uh, the poor to buy food. Those are considered transfers from the government to individuals. It doesn't represent a production of a product. You've been watching The Composition of Gross Domestic Product. For more of my economics videos and other educational material from the Hoover Institution, please visit policyed.org.